Well, hello there, Yellow Army, and welcome to another interview here on official TUFC TV. As you can see, I'm joined by very much the man of the moment, Mr. Dan Holman. How are you doing, Dan? Yeah, good, thanks, Dom. How are you settling into life on the English Riviera then? No, it's been good. Uh, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying every minute of um, being with the boys and in training again and in full-time football again. So, yeah, loving it, thanks. Rick, it's like if you would talk back, go back to about five years ago, obviously you were part of the Cheltenham side under the gaffer uh, that won the uh, National League. Something that, again, we went very close to last season, we'll be aiming for again this season. Things didn't quite go to plan, but you were very much hot property at the time. Can you just talk us through that, Dan, what, what, how that season went under the gaffer and, and what went on from there? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, signed and I, would, I spent, I was at Colchester at the time and then... Um, wasn't playing, so went on loan to Woking, did well there, um, then um, had the opportunity to go into the Football League or with the gaffer at Cheltenham. And I just felt once I'd spoke to the gaffer, um, that was going to be the right place for me. Um, and then from there, hit the ground running um, at Cheltenham and the gaffer, of course, they were top of the league, doing really well. And, you know, it was a team that I just sort of slotted into um, the gaffer's philosophy at the time and um, the intensity really suited me and I think it was 16 goals in 18 games I ended up getting for Cheltenham, um, 30 in total in the season. So obviously it was a really good campaign personally and for the whole club. So then you're there just on the uh, cusp of having a real chance in, in, in a football league because um, I think you mentioned that obviously at Colchester you weren't really getting a real fair crack of the whip there. What happened from there though? Um, so, I, I was I was obviously out of contract at the time um, with Cheltenham, so we just signed six months. Um, but I was loving it, obviously, because of my time at Colchester and not really seeing that the grass is always greener. Um, I was playing and loving my time at Cheltenham, so I signed signed for another two years. But unfortunately, just got a, picked up an injury the day, the, the Friday. I had a really good pre-season as well. Um, the Friday before Leighton Orient at home. Um, and played for the first few games trying to get through it but unfortunately I broke a bit of my toe um, we didn't find out till about three or four games down the line but I was just in agony um, and then it just uh, just took a little bit longer than maybe was expected um, through the surge and had to go and operate and stuff and the team wasn't doing as well as we'd hoped in League 2 so it was just a bit of a coming out of the team at the wrong time and then having a the trouble getting back, you know, it's football, like these things happen. Um, and obviously the team had to move on in the meantime of me being out um, and everything changes fast in football, as, as we all know. And of course, then you move into part-time football and set up a very successful business in your own right. Um, but you were lured back into full-time football, weren't you? And you were obviously from the farm, must have seen that uh, your, gaff, your old gaffer, uh, Gary Johnson, has then moved on to Torquay and things have gone going so well there. How did the move to play more come about then? Yeah, so like you said, like, I had a few um, loans from Cheltenham and stuff and then ended up at Aldershot and just wasn't really enjoying it as much, um, whether that was because we wasn't winning anymore or whatever. Um, so I decided to set myself up after football. I think any player in the you know lower divisions, um, it's always a not a concern, but something that's on the back, in the back of your mind, what am I going to do after football? And obviously I came into professional football late as well, coming through the non-league. I didn't sign to Colchester till I was 24. So um, it was always something I needed to do. Um, so I decided to step away from it, set up a fitness business and then just play part-time for the local clubs. Um, I then, COVID hit. Um, so I was doing all my fitness training online. So me and my wife, just we just had a little boy and, We'd always had the itch to go and, and live somewhere else, live abroad. So we, we moved to Dubai. I did some football coaching out there with um, some players and in, in an academy. Um, along with my fitness on, on Zoom, the time difference was nice. So it was fine. It worked well. Um, my wife went and did hairdressing. Um, but again, when I was out there and I was coaching people and I just felt good, I felt fit and I just... I saw the gaffer, I'd spoke to the gaffer previously, like just just keeping in contact sort of thing. And I just thought maybe there was an opportunity. So um, we spoke and he said, you know, I was still in Dubai at the time. Um, he was still in the thick of 
in the thick of, I called him and he was in the thick of like a promotion and whatever. So um, going for obviously the promotion that I just missed out on. Um, so then we touched base again when I was back um, and the opportunity was there to come in. I'd kept myself fit and then credit to the, you know, to the gaffer, I have to thank him because a lot of people, my situation, obviously I know my situation of still being fit and feeling good, but I'm sure a lot of managers would have said like, are you having a laugh, mate? Like you've, you know, you haven't been playing pro like properly for a couple of seasons or whatever. Um, but he gave me the opportunity. So I thank him and, and Downsy for, for letting me come in. And then obviously from there, I've been able to show them what I've been working hard for in the background for a while. Yeah, I mean, the Gaffer's uh, stamp network has always sort of stretched far and wide. I'm not sure it's stretched quite as far as Dubai before, and to be totally honest, Dan. But, um, I mean, you must be delighted with how pre-season's gone. I mean, we looking back on the last three games, you scored five goals in eight days. Uh, you must be absolutely buzzing. Yeah, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with, with my performances so far and, and my goals especially because, you know, that's what I'm, I'm going to be part of the team to do, to score goals. So, yeah, it couldn't have gone couldn't have gone better for me. Obviously, I was under a bit of pressure being on trial for a while, um, which I always think helps me, to be honest, being under a bit of pressure. Um, and like I said to you before in our first interview, that's what I feel that I've missed at other clubs when I've been away from the gaffer, is that pressure to perform every day, every week. Um, I think that brings the best out of me, knowing if you're not doing it, someone else will will be in the, waiting in the wings to take your place and vice versa if someone's you know the people in the squad are good players good people and they're all ready to to help the team and you know take your place or do 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 as well as they can yeah you mentioned didn't you that the uh the gaffer really does bring out the uh the best in you doesn't it and you and you, you've mentioned before that actually it's when you went to other clubs it w wasn't quite the same but this really does work for you doesn't it yeah um just for experience like every every player is different and um everyone you know, adapts to different styles um, for whatever reason. We're only early in pre-season, but, you know, at Cheltenham, it was the best best football I've ever played and, you know, most enjoyable because when you win, it's just in, it's just enjoyable, you know, when you're winning games and when you're fighting for titles and, you know, trying to be the best player you can be, that's when you step away and you take a breather after the season. That's what, you know, makes you want to go again. When When it's just sort of just being there, hoping you play well and no one's driving you and giving you that ambition. It's just, for me, it's just not as, not the same. And of course, you uh, you know your strike partner pretty well, do you? He's not a bad one. He's Danny Wright. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, It's been lovely to um, partner with Wright again. It was a throwback. Um, we had a, it, it was nice that first, um, I, think, I think, the Plymouth game when I went on at half-time and standing back next to Wrighty on the halfway line give each other a little uh, fish pump, said, welcome back. Um, but no, it's great. And obviously we know, um, I know how right he plays and he knows how I play. So hopefully that can help, help Torquay now. Do you think there's a bit of you where it feels like you've got unfinished business? Because obviously you had this, you got so close to sort of making it in the EFL before and all that. You know, obviously still, you know, still a good age and all of that. Uh, do, you, do you really feel that that's, that's spurring you on as well, that unfinished business? Yeah, absolutely. Like it's football's, you know, I've loved football my whole life, and I suppose I stepped away from a personal decision to try and secure myself and my family um, financially, and just trying to make sure we were okay. But it's in my heart, and when you still feel fit and good, and I knew I had more to offer, one hundred percent, I feel like I've got unfinished business, and really to prove to myself that what I can achieve. Because when you've scored goals at this level so many goals at this level and you've always played at this level to be playing below when you're feeling good it just doesn't yeah it doesn't feel right so like I said I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity and hopefully I can um, score some goals for Torquay Well we're absolutely delighted to have you on board and I know that I'm talking for the Yellow Army so I'm not going to be naive enough to ask you if you've got any goal tally targets for the season but um, you know are, are you feeling good obviously in, in, in as much as are you looking at around the teammates and that because there's a lot of new players but they uh, all seem to be gelling really well together and it's just pre-season but it's exciting times isn't it? No yeah for sure like I said about the gaffer and Downsy like they know what a good person is they've been around the game a long time they know what they're looking for so they don't just bring anyone into the 
into the club. That's why I was thankful for them let, letting me come in training because they don't just get people in for the sake of it. So um, they get good people and I think that's m massively important to have a successful team because you've got to be together. There's going to be tough times, good times. You're going to be in, out the team, have good and bad results. So that team unity and that good people is is massive. Um, so, yeah, getting back to the question. Um, but, yeah, I think I think that's a massive strength of of all the all the Gaffer and Downsy's teams is is they build that good spirit within everyone. Well, Dan, we've really enjoyed watching you in uh, in pre season. We're just hoping that you've saved a, a fair few of those goals up for the season proper, and um, we look forward to seeing you against Altrincham a uh, week Saturday. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Dom. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us today, Dan, and uh, thanks for joining us, Yellow Army. We'll be back with another interview again very very soon.